Hey everybody, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zarian. I'm joined by the Gina De Laurentiis to my cooking show, Rich Stamboli. I'm Gina. De, I'm, you're, I'm Gina to your Bobby Flay. You're, you're Gina, Gina, Gina De Laurentiis to my Bobby Flay. Oh, very. I like that. You we know, can I'm go cool to Europe together. Let's do it. It's uh, Rich and Andrew in Italy, just you, trying to eat something. What would you do? Like, since I knew you had to go into the city today for a bunch of meetings. Yeah. What would you do if I just brought like some focaccia and just effing wailed it at you right now? Oh, I would love some focaccia. <laughs> I do it. I'm not. I'm not doing bread. I'm doing keto. So. And, oh, really? Yeah. And you had to go into the city just covered in focaccia. Covered in focaccia bread mm -hmm. i'm okay with that uh yeah i'm wearing a suit again this is not a normal thing this is not a regular thing a lot of people were upset it threw people off mm -hmm. like oh the show look andrew's getting big time now with a suit <laughs> i have a, I, I got a job <laughs> i got a really i got a really crazy corporate job yeah that i don't think anybody realizes how nuts it is like today i'm in corporate meetings all day mm -hmm. Um, you got a long day today. I got a very long day today, so I'm wearing yeah. a suit. <laughs> you got to wine and dine too, <laughs> so much. Which I feel like I feel like that. I, I'll give you credit for that because I know how exhausting those days can be of like meeting, 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 and then just when you think you're done, it's like, well, I got to take these guys out to dinner. We got now. dinners, yeah, we got dinner going on. So uh, I wanted to do the show, so we're doing a little bit early today, but there's a ton to talk about. Uh, guys, listen, the last couple of weeks has been an awesome ride. So if you're new to the show, if you're only listening on YouTube or watching on YouTube, I should say, join us on every podcast platform. Trade up. You could go to uh, iTunes, uh, Apple Podcasts now, I should say that. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Music, Pandora, Audible Podcasts, every single place you could imagine, that's where we are. Are we on iHeartRadio? We are on iHeartRadio. Are we on Sirius? We are not on Sirius. We should be. Though. We should be. We could be. We will be. We could be. Hey, listen. If I wanted to, we could do it. I can manifest that too. Uh, so a lot's going on this week. Is has been wild. Uh, obviously, we'll start off with some of the bad news. New WWE releases. So I had been told that NXT UK was getting some releases, mm -hmm. and there was going to be uh, possibly not higher end releases, right. but maybe here and there sporadic you know corporate restructuring has been going on and that's what i kind of imagine these releases on the wwe side the main yeah. side would be from but uh you know obviously it wasn't and there are some tremendous cuts the biggest being braun Strowman, physically physically <laughs> i'm just going in size order here guys okay uh braun Strowman released alistair black uh lana ruby riot buddy murphy and santana garrett and santana garrett's bizarre to me because she was just called up to the... I mean, it's all bizarre. Yeah. Some of them is, some of them... Like, Lana, I'm not surprised. It's also... We'll, we'll preface this by saying, like, it's always, it's always unfortunate... Terrible. ...people have to lose their jobs. But, listen, for the most part, I think everybody on this list is going to land on their feet. I don't see Braun wrestling anywhere else. We'll go into that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's interesting. So, not every one of these releases were for the same reasons. Right. Um, obviously, budgetary cuts is the overall story that they're telling you. Uh, but bronze was very much equated to how big his contract was. This guy, I mean, it's a seven figure deal and WWE just felt that he, it wasn't working. And unfortunately for a lot of these higher top tier guys, you know, what's interesting. So a guy like Braun, um, like top tier guys like Seth Rollins, Roman yeah. Reigns, there's a no cut policy in these contracts. Mm-hmm. Like, Roman Reigns has a no-cut policy. Vince cannot go and cut that contract out and be like, oh, sorry, guys. Like That would be insane. <laughs> he has to pay you the remainder of that contract unless right. you do something so, I mean, ridiculous. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Braun Strowman didn't have that in his deal. Mm. And it, it was very much a budgetary cut. They realized that he's, a, he's very highly paid. And mm -hmm. uh, it's not equating to anything. And listen, at the end of the day, it's a business, right? Yeah, I mean, in a situation like that, this is pure speculation, but like, you know, you could easily picture somebody going, uh, Mr. McMahon, we need to do this, this and that. Uh, here are the contracts of whatever. And then he, go he goes, we're paying him how much? Oh, no. And then that's the decision, you know? Yeah, well, this is a total restructure of the company, mm -hmm. you know, the corporate side. You know what's fascinating? So a lot of like people are like, well, he was getting paid a lot. He should have just asked for less money. I saw that. Somebody commented that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, it doesn't work like that. And you know what? It's not really his fault that creative sucks. Yeah, right, right. Exactly. They they have this monstrous guy two years. I mean, he's two years past his prime, right? At this point. His Do you peak, think so? Two years ago, this guy was so over with the kids. Okay. Um, 
every everyone listen and i and i have a good point of view of that right all my friends mm-hmm. have kids right all these kids loved braun Strowman. Mm-hmm. they freaking loved it when he was like murdering people in the ambulance and all that stuff doing the choo-choo train the cho- no pre-choo-choo train. pre-choo-choo train pre-choo-choo okay pre-choo-choo. when he was just flipping things okay tables desks, cars it doesn't matter mm-hmm. they freaking loved him this guy this guy was hot and they killed him they did you know the creative thing is very interesting because like I also feel like no matter, I feel like sometimes from the stories you hear, no matter what you pitch to the office, a lot of that stuff doesn't get through. It doesn't get heard. It doesn't get seen. Right. Yeah. So who know who's to say that Braun wasn't like, hey, listen, like I kind of want to do X, Y, and Z. And then somebody goes, nah, that's not going to happen. Yeah. You know, like we got other plans for you. And then that other plan just unfortunately happened to be him getting fired. Yeah. So I, I you, you want me to, and th- this is not based on anything I know. And okay. I think you have the same point of view on this. Shoot. I don't see, personally, I don't see him going anywhere else. No. Nope. Uh, I see this as a, he's going to go home for a couple of months. Sure. And then WWE is going to renegotiate his contract. Oh, for sure, dude. Like, it's it's not like we can see the writing on the wall. And also, it sucks that, you know, all these folks got fired. But at the same time, listen, like, uh, it, these he's, he's, he's a wealthy guy, you know? He'll be fine. Um, I think... At the end of the day, if he saved his money, he can coast off that money till God knows when, you know, make some investments, do all that stuff. But who's to say when live shows are kicking, Royal Rumble comes around next year. Braun Strowman's back. Yeah. Braun Strowman's yeah. back. You know, like, I don't think he's going to. It, it. He strikes me as a guy like Ryback. I don't know the guy personally. I don't know Ryback personally. But from a fan's perspective, he strikes me as a dude who's like not going to show up. On WWE him. for life. He's yeah. not going to show up on indies. You know, he's not going to call Tony Khan and be like, put me in the main event, dude. Yeah. Have you heard about my idea about making a group? The dummy of squad. Dumb dums. You know, who would be in the dumb dumb squad? And he hangs up on him. Hello? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, your dumb dumb squad is over. How do you feel about that? It's done, man. I yeah. think uh, <laughs> it's done. He, he was he was in the hallway going, nobody. Huh? Am I the only well, one? that was a big problem. He pitched the dumb dumb squad and that was it for Vince. So. So I don't think he's going anywhere. But on the other hand, Alistair Black. You know what? He says he was blindsided by this. Mm-hmm. He did not expect this. Uh, there was a report that Thea was training for a return, possibly to WWE. I mean, I, I, I don't, don't know think if that's he's, gonna happen. <laughs> I, like, I, 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 I don't know what to make of this because they were ready to push him, mm-hmm. and something really changed. Something happened where they figured out that, oh, we, we really don't know what to do with this guy. He said that he always felt that Vince respected him and he had a good relationship with him. Vince mm-hmm. liked the character. Vince thought he was a top tier guy. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if he was. I, I have to say, you know, when when you have a creative team of like mm-hmm. 30 people and these guys cannot come up with something interesting for a guy like Aleister Black, maybe you need to rethink on who's getting canned and who's not dude it's it's they have so much talent i mean on that roster can you cut the mic for two seconds yeah that's what he said that was uh that was like the rumor oh okay which i don't want to say on air okay you know Got but it. you know like he posted alistair back posted a social media post saying like this is what i was born to do yeah. Right. I love that. I love the fact that this guy's going to show up somewhere. And guess what? All out falls right as those ninety days Ends. is up. Right? So I mean, th- th- again, this is part of the discussion too, right? And then let's mm-hmm. go into the uh, who may go where, right? Lana, for example, Lana's released. Uh, I think Lana's release is welcoming. No brainer. Uh, I and not not because I don't like her. Like mm-hmm. I'm just telling you, I think she her best, her and Rusev together were a tremendous act. A hundred percent. Tremendous act. And it is something that you can naturally recreate mm-hmm. with Miro and her in AEW because the reality is it's their personas yes. that's going to get over. Absolutely. And I think she's so easy, and I, n- not saying anything about her personally, but the mm-hmm. character she's always been able to play, she's easily dislikable. Easily loved and easily dislikable. Yeah. And also, I really think if she, this is my two cents, if she does go to AEW... She gets bonked on the head immediately, and the Russian accent <gasps> comes back. Can you imagine? I mean, well, Wouldn't you pop? Like, well, what if it's not Russian? What, like, what if she becomes French or German? Uh, that could be her gimmick. Every <laughs> week, she gets bonked on the head, and she becomes. She has a different accent. I do like that. 
I just want, you know, like, can she do like a good, like any kind of Eastern European accent? Can she go from Polish to Ukrainian, probably. you know, to like Macedonian? Probably. I just probably. wanted to become like, like touring the, the, the Eastern European bloc. I think that, I think they fit perfectly together. And you know what? Like as much as I like Miro, I do think he needs his wife as his valet. I think so too. They're such a good package, right? Yeah. Tremendous package. Uh, Ruby Riot is, you know. I could, I mean, I could see why they released her. They just couldn't, they couldn't figure her out. Mm-hmm. I don't think it was deserved. I think Ruby Riot going to any company would be a tremendous asset for their women's division, top to bottom. Uh, she makes a lot of sense for EW. She mm-hmm. also makes a lot of sense for Impact. I don't, I don't know where the answer is. Santana Garrett, we discussed, she was getting pulled to the main roster, but Muddy, mm-hmm. Buddy Murphy is very interesting. He's going to show up in the Impact Zone as Murph Budman. Murph Budman, <laughs> attorney of law. Uh, his style is. Mm-hmm. Like modern day, mm-hmm. like Kenny Omega ish. That that you know, a lot of lot of knee strikes, a yeah. lot of chops, a lot of elbows. I think he'll be he'll be great anywhere else. It's the further kind of hybrid style. I had a I, this is again this is me bl- playing pure fanboy here. But I had a thought yesterday. I had two thoughts yesterday, just two the whole day. Um, not thought number one was it would be so delicious if Buddy Murphy went to AEW. Right, but Kenny used him as a proxy uh, for what? And what for his matches? To give me, get, tell me. Explain. Like for example, if it's like instead of using um, uh, Nakazawa, saying like, "Oh, to get to me, you have to wrestle Nakazawa," he'll say, "You know what? To get through me, you have to wrestle this guy." And he comes who's out pretty much like he yeah, looks like version, me. Yeah, he wrestles like me. Let's do it. You know, and like I feel like that would be such a such an f you troll to the fans and then you eventually have that split and that feud between buddy murphy and kenny omega i think that would be cool i'm playing like fanboy um but does he fall into a pack category like i think wwe saw him in the same way you know just another guy he's a very good worker but Mm -hmm. he's just lacking that that wwe charisma that can quote unquote connection with the fans whatever it is i you know these stuff i'm very curious for him I'm very, very curious for yeah. him. I think Alistair Black, Tommy End, is going to get over mm-hmm. anywhere he freaking goes. Absolutely, dude. Uh, this guy was a stud on the independents. Uh, for me, I would really... Mm-hmm. I, I think AEW would be the answer for him. Mm-hmm. Really. But again, a lot of this... Don't be surprised if you see some of these names return back immediately. Yeah. You know, like, it. that happened a ton over the last couple of years. You know, they brought back Ginger Mahal and a few other guys. Uh, Drew McIntyre, I think... Like he did the tour of the Indies and got yeah. brought back in a big way. Who's to say it's not going to happen? But I do think like you know you have that those tree branches of like where these guys might go, and it's all like fun and stuff. Like Alistair Black could show up in AEW. Who's to say this guy does not join Bullet Club? Who's he, to say this guy doesn't show up in the G One? You his, know his uh, his stream where he mentioned on numerous things. Mm-hmm. He was airing out a lot of his grievances. Uh, it also spoke very highly at the company. He brought up some interesting things. Like one of it was. Um, hold on, let me pull it up here. One of it was that he he kind of like took a shot at like dirt sheets. Mm-hmm. It was like, oh, everybody's reporting I was going to go back down to NXT. And then like five minutes later, he's like, oh, so when I was talking about going down to NXT, uh, you know, that's the other thing, yeah. right? Why? Obviously, Braun Strowman wouldn't work there. But Ruby Riot, mm-hmm. Buddy Murphy, mm-hmm. Alistair Black. Why couldn't they go down to NXT? I feel like they have that internally. The co- Again, this is pure speculation on my part. I feel like internally the company has this mindset with NXT where if you put Buddy Murphy, Aleister Black, and Ruby Riot back on that roster, they will outshine every competitor that they're trying to build. But they're also trying to build a program with ratings, right? They're trying That's to build a big problem for them. Right. But if you watched like NXT over the last few weeks, it's really been like a lot of their own like performance center people and a couple of their signings, right? Mm. You know, like they really want Santos Escobar to shine. You know, they really want to push MSK and Bronson Reed. They want to have like their homegrown guys. And you see kind of like, not that Gargano is being pushed to the side, but I feel like internally they may be like, well, he had his time to shine already. Yeah. Chiampa had his time to shine already. Adam Cole, Kyle, like the whole Adam Cole thing I found interesting, you know? Because, like, people were saying, like, why is he not on the main roster? 
I think they're keeping him there as like an NXT lifer. You know, people like seeing him. Yeah, I think some mm-hmm. of those guys absolutely they're going to be like that. I I I I do find it fascinating that mm-hmm. they don't just move these people around. They have a secondary brand. You know, you, here's here's the option. You got a guy like Alistair Black. Do you right. go to him and insult him? Be like, listen, we're going to bring it. Alistair Black's a different story, but like a Ruby Riot. Mm-hmm. Listen, we're paying. I'm 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 throwing a number. I have no idea. We're paying you sure. three hundred thousand dollars a year. Listen, we I don't think it's making sense on the main roster right now. But if we moved you down to NXT for two fifty mm-hmm. or you know two hundred. You would have a you would have an easier schedule and you could rebuild your talent, your your character and your persona right, right. over there. I don't know if they offer it and people are like that's so effing insulting. Mm-hmm. You're gonna cut me and move me down there. I think guys like a hundred percent Alistair Black could have come up and Alistair Black came up too early. Ricochet's yeah. a great example, you know. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna put out a rumor here, which generally when I'm told stuff, it's coming from a, a higher level mm-hmm. with the company. I was told specifically that there's going to be more releases to come. Mm-hmm. Not today. Maybe not today. I don't know. I don't have a day. Right. But I was specifically told that... Um, I was specifically told that... I'm trying to word this properly. This is going to be a regular thing. Mm-hmm. You're going to see these releases happen. They're, they're reshuffling the deck with talent. They're realizing that the company got very bloated mm-hmm. uh, with talent over the last, I don't know, two, three years. Where WWE doesn't release anybody. They hang on to people. They threw ridiculous money to guys like Gallows and Anderson. They threw ridiculous amount of money to them to stay. and <laughs> Only to let them go. <laughs> and they wouldn't let them go. Yeah. And then they let them go. Uh, you know, after WrestleMania. So it, it's, it's bizarre. It, it, the whole thing is bizarre. The he, whole thing. Here's my other conspiracy theory. Vince and Cody are booking all out together. That's amazing. That's a great conspiracy. You know, like that's hey, like that's like a deep rabbit hole conspiracy. Like, let me give you, let me give you some of my guys. Nine, in ninety days, you can use my toys. That that's so bizarre. You know, well, that's. I think that's part of the plan too. Now, if you're AEW, you have to play this smart. You can't. You can't go and just grab everybody. You know, I put out right. a tweet yesterday on the Matman account, <laughs> yes. I, and I'm like, just picture yes, this. Yes, yes. It's all <laughs> out. The main event is Kenny Omega versus Braun Strowman. Braun crushes him in three minutes and becomes the AEW World Champion. Oh, you have so many people took a dump on. People that. really got upset people at got, even the concept being put in the universe. People got so mad at that, and you know what? I looked at it and I was like, oh, that's a good troll. That was a really good troll, Andrew. Like real, real spot on because people were coming out of the woodwork that I don't even think know we have a podcast They're who so were upset. so butthurt by your state. Yeah, yeah. You know, like all the Kenny defenders. Like it's a funny concept. That's I a think it's, it's a great concept. All, it's, it's a terrible, it's terrible, but it's mm. freaking hysterical just to envision that. Yeah. Uh, you think they'd call him Big Strongman? <laughs> you know what I do see? <laughs> If he yeah. does go, obviously it's going to be him and Big Show in that main in that first match. You think so? Him and Big Show are going to be in a match, just doing sure. planches on each other. But listen, that guy's not that he's he's six six. He's not he's not like a seven foot giant. He's not he's he's like shoot six six. He I thought he was six, like six, six nine. No, he's like shoot six six. Oh wow! Look it up. See, I will. I don't think I don't think he's he's as big as we envision How him to be. Tall is Braun Strowman. Braun Ooh. Bound Stout Man six eight. Six eight, okay, but that's I think that's the his work height, okay, or maybe he is six eight, maybe he is six eight. Um, so listen, I I see this as being an opportunity for these guys to go out and do something cool. Mm-hmm. Listen, Ruby Rye, great asset. Lana definitely has to go with uh, Miro. Buddy Murphy could go anywhere. Santana Garrett, she's interesting because I, I don't understand what the issue with her has been over these last like five years. She's very talented. She created a name on the independence with with women's wrestling before the whole women's boom. She's been around for a while. I I think that Wonder Woman gimmick works for her. Mm. I just don't know what the issue is. I don't know why she hasn't been on a main roster somewhere. Can you cut that for you? Thank you. <laughs> okay, that that. Thank you, Rich, Rich. With some insight for me that I cannot share. Yeah, because uh, he's I, just cursing at me. I, I looked. I looked it up yesterday. Okay, and uh, I think that may have been. <laughs> okay, it's possible. I don't yeah. know. So uh, currently, there are seven. So right now, look at this. Currently, there's seven active women on SmackDown and nine on Raw. That's another piece of the notes mm-hmm. here. Uh, budget cuts were the reason, like we said, but there's a lot, a little bit more to it than than that. Um, you know, last week we spoke about this from my experience. Mm-hmm. Um, when you see a major corporate restructure like this on the level, you know, there are some indicators that maybe they are looking to possibly put it out there that maybe we're for sale. Hey, I'm not saying that they are. 
I'm not saying that they, they will sell. I'm not saying any of that. But based on indicators, there's two things here. One, my gut feeling, mm-hmm. and this is my my assessment. Yes. Okay. My assessment is that looking at their looking at their expenses mm-hmm. and their quarterly reports, right? To the stockholders and mm-hmm. investors. They they shocked all their investors when they realized how much money they were making throughout the pandemic. Because the, yeah. the concept, even though these people are investors in the company, they really don't understand the wrestling business. They just, they realize that it's a good business to be in right now because mm-hmm. the companies, they don't care what WWE does. They just want to see the stock move. Right, right, right. So it's analysts predicting where it should go. They blew every expectation out of the water because mm-hmm. they cut the biggest expense that they had and that was touring. Right. So they made crazy amount of money because they were still selling merch on their website. Yes. They were still getting those TV deals. Yeah, there's no... And then their, their their expenses got cut. Their travel schedule got cut. They cut some of their staffing. They furloughed people. So their numbers were looking phenomenal. They opened up the Thunderdome. Obviously, it's a great expense, but they were still looking good because they're not traveling. Now, there's so many eyes on this company. Mm-hmm. As far as a corporate restructure goes, TV deals go, the talent goes, television goes. They need to make sure that their quarterly numbers are going to hit when they hit touring. They've probably done deep dive forensic analytics into seeing where these numbers are going to be. And it doesn't fall in line with what they expect. So they now have to cut costs to meet that gain. That's how that's how I will I will look the way that I look at this. The simplest of answers, mm-hmm. right? Because sometimes it's the simplest of answers. That is the simplest of answers to me. That's fascinating, too. Also, because, like, you know, it's it's more. It's it's not a spite thing. It's a money thing. Um, where fans think it's a spite well, thing. Well, sometimes it's a spite thing. You know, but. I don't think with these guys it was a spite thing. I think it was like a money thing and also like a we don't have anything for you thing. And then predicting the future, especially with live shows. Like, they're going to do... I feel like they're going to break records with merch sales at these live shows. Because if you yeah. think about it, like, think about how many kids during lockdown maybe weren't old enough to go to a wrestling show and now they are and now lockdown's kind of over live shows are coming back right yeah. now they are each kid's walking away with like three t-shirts a dad's getting a t-shirt a mom's getting a t-shirt like everybody's gonna get some such merch from these yeah. shows and wwe puts out every single kind of merch imaginable which is nuts you know uh beer koozies beer koozies umbrellas umbrellas everything like if you are like hey i don't want this finn balor t-shirt but i'll take this pair of finn balor socks yeah. and the finn balor beer koozie and the finn balor top hat and the finn balor beret i just i just feel like this there's a lot of shuffling going they also yeah. did a bunch of corporate hires right they hired somebody from fox uh will be will be part of the digital property and will oversee wwe studios so if they i mean this is not we, we have reached a very uh, a pinnacle point in WWE, mm-hmm. right? We have different eras. The yeah. era of Bruce Pritchard being sent to run WWE Studios or Shane McMahon running, you know, whatever, that's gone. Oh, they are hiring sure. the best that they could possibly get for right sure. now in from all different types of media. And you're seeing that. They got a guy from Disney. They got a guy from ESPN, uh, ESPN Disney. They got a guy from Fox, uh, the, the, the Zone guy. I mean... Nick Khan is building his all-star team, his dream team right now of mm. top level corporate entertainment and, and sports executives. It, I, I truly romanticize that era of WWF um, only because like, I feel like that's such a good like definition of mom and pop, you know, especially with like, let's say, let's use Bruce, Bruce Pritchard for an example. Yeah. Right. Vince going, Hey pal, do you think you could do this? Well, I've never run, I've never done this before. I think you'll do a good job. Yeah. You know, as opposed to now where it's like, we need the best of the best to do it. Just short of people who are working directly in Hollywood and for Netflix or something like that, you know? If they crossed over to get these guys who are producing, like, Netflix shows yeah. and showrunners of that caliber, I feel like it would be such a different and tremendous But product, they try you know? that, right? They try that with the writing team. So let, let, let's get to that, right? Let's sure. go into that. WWE has been restructuring... Uh, I, I, I think the next big move for them is to hire some legitimate, high-quality studio writers. For sure, yeah. I, I mean, that no wrestling, that no wrestling, that understand mm. wrestling. We got to also remember that because they, they on the, if your corporate side knows nothing about wrestling, which these guys, they're yeah. not wrestling guys getting yeah. hired. Your writing team has to know the product. You know who I, you know who I'd hire? 
Oh. I feel like it's an untapped resource. I would hire um, comic book writers who are fans of wrestling. Yeah. Like uh, Jason Aaron comes to mind. Like that dude is a tremendous, he's, he's writing for Marvel now pretty much exclusively. He's a tremendous writer and half of his feed is, is pro wrestling and half of it is comic books, you know? Yeah. And I think somebody like that would get it, would get it, be able to come up with like cohesive stories. But again, it's a shark tank. You're fighting for your spot as a writer. Yeah. You're fighting for Vince's ear. You know, I feel like unless uh, there's an old story about CM Punk slamming down like two years worth of storyline on Vince's desk. I feel like unless you're doing that, nothing's no, nothing, going to get hurt. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so I would say expect some more cuts to be announced in the coming weeks. Mm -hmm. I, I would I would like to say. So that's your little byline, guys. I would say expect some more cuts. Okay. All right. Um, Let's can we talk a little bit about like it's obviously Super it's slam. just it's just a rumor at this point, mm -hmm. but we talked about this for quite some time a few years ago, and I call I said like Disney would buy them. Yeah, I feel like said that. I feel like I'm wrong about that now, and yeah. I'm so leaning toward NBC, and it makes more sense because that whole Peacock thing is that Peacock is garbage. Oh, right? it's terrible. It, Peacock is garbage. I mean, like it's it's good enough. But when you compare it to like other streaming Hulu, platforms, Netflix, even WWE Network, garbage, you yeah. know. And I'm just kind of like, did they? Is this like a honeypot deal? Did they sweeten the pot by putting them on Peacock just so they can try to like get an in and like, you know? So normally when a sale happens, mm -hmm. it, there's like tons of rumblings, uh -huh. and there's not much except for the assumption, right? But if you're Peacock and you're paying this much money, mm -hmm. why would you continue paying it? Because a TV rights deal ends in a couple of years, right? Right, and obviously WWE is going to want to want more money. They're not going to want less. Right. So, why wouldn't you say, okay, you know what? I'm going to give you know whatever, whatever the evaluated billion mm -hmm. dollar number is. I'm just going to buy the company, and in a couple of years, in five to seven years, I'll get my money's worth. Mm -hmm. I'll own the property then, and everything is pure profit after that. I'm not going to owe any money. Ah. Uh -huh. Uh, I think that would make the most sense because these TV deals have gotten so gigantic. Absolutely. Um, and WWE, by the way, very smart. Uh, you know, people are like, well, why are they on two different networks? Well, this is exactly why you yeah. created a bidding war in three years, where all because other people have your properties, and now you're going to bring in more people, right? To to negotiate, and it's just going to make your deal even bigger. So, absolutely, I don't know. We'll see, man. Uh, I, I, very interesting stuff. Very very interesting stuff. Um, I kind of have a question for you. Yeah, shoot. Okay, and I'm going back to the talent releases. Um. It's again, I think we both feel the same way in the modern age of speculation. It seems like the age of quote unquote politicking has slowed down tremendously. Do you think? No, it hasn't. Do you think backstage in WWE, if these guys politicked a little harder, you know, they, I, they like, like Baron Corbin's a good example, and not only because Shin likes him, but Baron Corbin's a great example, but so many people on social like media, him. huh? So, uh, the co everybody in the company loves him. Right. Social media freaking hates him. Everybody, a lot of people on social media yesterday were saying, why weren't you the guy who got, which is an awful thing to what say. What a terrible thing to right? say to someone, huh? Why didn't you get fired? Guess what? People like him, right? <laughs> a lot backstage. I feel like there's, it's, it's an unpredictable, unquantifiable element. I'm going to tell you, this is how life works. Here's the secret to success. Mm -hmm. Be freaking liked, right? Yeah. You want to be successful in your life? I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you the Andrew Zarian top way to be successful don't be hyper aggressive mm -hmm. right uh feel like you're in control of mm -hmm. the situation even when you're not smoke and mirrors go a long way and align with people be nice be mm -hmm. friendly don't stir shit up because then you got a fucking job for life mm -hmm. look at baron corbin i feel like you're gonna go into the aaron burr song from uh hamilton right now <laughs> <laughs> uh I don't, I don't like wearing a suit, but I freaking do. You know why? I think it's turning you into a monster, Andrew. The suit? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, corporate takeovers. It's all I'm, I'm about. I'm about 80s high corporate aggression. That's I'm, what I'm all about. I'm really excited to be with you in Chicago when you're wearing that suit so that when people come up to us that recognize us or even people that know us go yeah. like, hey, guys, great to see you. You go, listen, that's nice. Uh, why don't you get uh, me and Rich a couple of seltzers? Here? Hey, do me a favor. Can you can you go down and uh, call Cindy and get me a couple of seltzers? Thanks. Uh, all of the <laughs> podcasts in our chat room. By the way, we have a great chat room, about 100 something people there right now on YouTube. He says, secret to Andrew's success, book coming soon. Uh, I actually have a working title. 
to my book. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it was a it was a funny drug reference, but I'm afraid I'm going to get demonetized. Uh, so let's talk about WWE announced Saturday, August 21st for SummerSlam. We kind of, we broke that story, man. You yeah, be very dude. proud of yourself. We broke that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm very proud of ourselves. So I I I guess now I could kind of talk about please do more in detail. I was told this like months ago, and I. I insulted the guy. I was like, well, you're wrong because it can't be on a Saturday. He's like, no, dude, it's a Saturday. Um, guy or girl. Let me just say that. Okay. Yeah, sure. I like to use guy, guys, guy, in general, in general, general like a yeah. guy. Uh, <laughs> so do you call women dude? All the time. Okay. All the time. Um, they kept telling me 21st and I even convinced this specific person that they were wrong. Mm-hmm. In these uh, in these messages that they're getting, I'm like, whoever's sending the, that email is an idiot, because obviously it's not going to be on a Saturday. He's like, no, dude, it's mm-hmm. Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. So they announced Saturday. Uh, they have yet to announce the location, but they said it's like a summer theme destination. Could mean a lot of things. I, I mean, listen, it could mean it could mean a lot of things, but <laughs> give me three I, off the top of your head, three summer theme destinations: Miami, boom, Fort Lauderdale, boom, uh, Tampa. That's three in Florida. Okay, that's it. I mean, what else? Hawaii, California. You know what? You know, Los Angeles, maybe. Sure. Hawaii, the Caribbean. I'm mm-hmm. going to Barbados. Maybe they're going to do it in Barbados. That'd be amazing. Is uh, that why you're going to Barbados? I am going to Barbados. <laughs> yeah, WrestleMania is in WrestleMania is in Barbados. Oh, uh, no, 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 guys, don't say that, please. Uh, I, I don't think Vegas. When I think of summer destination, I think that is the last place I want to be. But. You know, WWE is a weird company. They consider Jupiter a summer destination, so <laughs> might as well just go, go with Vegas. <laughs> the, the gas giant, so, Jupiter. <laughs> last Thursday, we I brought up that mm-hmm. I was specifically told by people in Vegas from the arena that they are planning for SummerSlam to be mm-hmm. there, and they also told me that there's going to be a uh, special guest host, and I was told it was Cardi B. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they were working out the deal. It... it was either completed or very close to completed when I was told this a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Cardi B is the her song "Up" is the official theme of SummerSlam, so it kind of makes sense, right? Mm. Yeah, I don't think they're gonna have somebody else. Too late to replace Cardi B. I mean, too late. I mean, listen, I, who knows? I, this this company's so weird. I don't know, but I, I'm willing to believe this person tremendously imagine, imagine if it was uh like uh like picardi b and it was patrick stewart patrick stewart dressed like dressed like cardi b you know what i'm kind of into that that'd be cool captain picardi yeah. b yeah um so the they did not announce the location however mm-hmm. and they put out that there's there's a lot i, I don't want to get into it but there's a tremendous amount of turmoil over this location mm-hmm. Whatever is happening is happening. I'm not going to bore everybody with the details. However, mm-hmm. WWE PR did do a very good job at sending out six locations that WWE is potent- that <laughs> could potentially host SummerSlam. <laughs> and immediately, I saw that list. I'm like, dude. I, and I called Rich, and, I, and I'm like, this list is total bullshit. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. Top to bottom, this list is the epitome of a PR st- fabrication. Mm-hmm. To soften the blow of the announcement, uh, to kind of take away the 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 leak, mm-hmm. and to make the announcement that they're going to make at the Belmont Stakes on Saturday, which I'm going to be there. I'm going to be at the Belmont Stakes. Well, you got a lot riding on yeah. that day. Well, they make me ride all the horses around <laughs> just to make sure they're okay, <laughs> and it's terrible, dude. Yeah, I got to say the <laughs> the pain I'm in by the end of that day. Yeah, they they dress me up like a jockey. And they put me on the horses, like, all right, take her out. Well, they put you on them backwards. Backwards, so, like, too. So, so it's freaking terrible. I just grab onto the tail and hope for the best. <laughs> wow. Um, so they're going to announce it for the Belmont Stakes. And I'm going to tell you why this story is bullshit, okay? Mm-hmm. They announced, uh, they obviously said Vegas, right? Mm-hmm. They said SoFi Stadium. They said uh, Miami. Mm-hmm. What is it? Nashville, Miami, Vegas, LA, New York. And Houston. Mm-hmm. If you look at their schedule, every one of those buildings has an event in the vicinity of that date. Right. Now, I know that Lady Gaga's performing at the guard at uh MetLife mm-hmm, mm-hmm. on the 19th, and I think the 21st is Summer Jam. And I really don't think WWE wants to put on a a, a, a Summer Slam along with a hot 97 Summer concert. Jam. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think that's gonna happen. Uh 
there's there's stuff happening in Miami. So essentially, every building has something. Houston mm -hmm. has something on the 16th. Okay. Okay. Uh, and they have, I believe, like a war, like a um, convention, like a construction convention in Nashville. One of the buildings had something. Mm -hmm. If you were to narrow it down, the only building that they could go and set up a gigantic stadium, okay, would have to be Vegas. Right. Because the last event is like the week before. It's like 10 days before, 90 days before. So they have plenty of time to set up and break down. And it would be the same night of the Pacquiao fight, too, oddly enough. It would be yeah. the same night of the Pacquiao fight. But I'm going to tell you something. I don't think anybody gives a crap about that Pacquiao fight. I don't, don't think, think so? I don't think it's as big of a deal as it would have been five years ago. So It's a big deal because crowds are there. It's a big deal that crowds are there, but you know what? If you're if you're WWE and you're trying to fill an arena, wouldn't you want to fill it when you already have twenty thousand people in yeah. the town? And there's some big giant event happening like across the street from the building too. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people in Vegas that 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 week. And listen, I think Vegas it should be Vegas. If the venue changes, it's a very last minute change. Yeah, I would be I would be very surprised. Um, I would be very very surprised. But they announced, I mean, based on the cities that they announced, you know what? San Diego's a great city. San Diego's a great city. Great summer town. Yeah. Freaking love San Diego, man. San Diego's fantastic. There's nothing better than San Diego. It's 75 and sunny year round. How do you, how do you beat it? Except the summer. It gets a little mm -hmm. warmer, but how do you beat it? So that's where I'm standing on this. Uh, I'm still standing by Vegas. Uh, I've spoken to a lot of people over this over the last week. I've gotten yelled at by people over this the last week, and I'm still standing by Vegas. Um, we'll see. Listen, I have no problem being wrong. I only like being wrong when it's like a better wrong. You know what I mean? In what way? Like if it was like Met Life, I would love it. I'd love to be like, you know what? I'm a jackass. I'm wrong. But you know what the guy did from Met Life? One of my friends in the front office, he's like, he's like, listen, I'm going to tell you something. He goes, <laughs> if I would know this, I would really know this if this was happening. He's a big uh, wrestling fan. He's like, if this was happening, I would shit my pants right now. That's how shocked that would be. I'm like, that's what happens when you're surprised. Right in front of you. You just poop your pants. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Um, what else do we have, Rich, with the, with the news? Anything? Uh, well, we got one little tidbit here. Yeah. Do you think WWE is going to uh, bring back part-time talent? Yes. To get the fans to watch? Yes. Everybody. Like a Brock Lesnar? Everybody. Uh, Rob Van Dam? I, I, I don't know Rob Van Dam, but I know <laughs> I, I know that Lesnar's a big name. Sabu. You know what? I would love Sabu. <laughs> I don't want to say <laughs> Uh, this, I, this guy, brother, I would say expect to see all of the big names that mm -hmm. that make sense. Yeah, but I mean, one big name that's not going to be there attached to a big person, Mark Henry. Mark Henry is not there. Oh, let me just let me just touch on Lesnar. Yeah, uh, they Lesnar was early on for SummerSlam plans. They were trying to do something. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the the concept behind Lesnar is to justify what. We are going to pay him. Mm -hmm. We need a more consistent touring schedule. Right, right. So we, we could build to this, you know, and those appearances by Lesnar will help sell tickets, obviously. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, and, and this is the other thing, you know, WWE going on their touring schedule, they, they put sold some tickets. They're selling it like pre-pandemic numbers, mm -hmm. like around there, which is, is not a terrible indicator. And it's also not a great indicator mm -hmm. because it shows that your product is not super hot, which we're going to get into. But it also, my God, we got like 30 minutes here. Uh, it shows <laughs> that the product is not super hot, but it also at the same time kind of shows, if you look at the statistics, oh, well, you know what? We're where we were. And that's a good thing. Yes. Because we were doing well. However, that's going to dwindle a little bit. When you start going to like non-major cities, that's going to really start falling apart. Listen, maybe, maybe certain towns are going to realize that they're just not ready yet. Certain cities are not ready yet. The people, people are not ready. The people. Uh, I'm ready, man. I've been ready forever. I'm ready, man. Uh, uh, listen, I'm excited for Chicago. I'm very. Uh, we'll talk about that too. Oh, I, yeah. I got. I got in big trouble. <laughs> really? Uh, by who? People like to yell at me, but they're like, "All right, it's fine." But they like, they're like, "Are you? Why? Why'd you say that? Why'd you do that?" But it's okay. Uh, well, I did it because I was told to buy tickets. So right, I thought, right. I, like, buy my flight already, and I thought that it was announced. We talked about this like two weeks ago, too, because you were like, hey, this is what's happening. This is what they want us to do. Blah, 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 blah. And then I was like, great. That sounds good. I listen. We both have like regular jobs and yeah. stuff that we need to take care of. So I, I think you took it the same way as like you didn't even know it wasn't announced. I, I genuinely I, that I felt bad. Right. I felt bad. I really did. I was like, dude, I'm so sorry. I, I honestly thought it was announced and I thought it was like it was a said thing. 
right. and I believe they did say it at one point that the goal was Chicago. Mm-hmm. So anyway, um, I, I expect returns to happen. Uh, Lesnar was a top contender for SummerSlam, mm-hmm. but it didn't work out, and they made you know it made sense for them. You know, they need to be touring to bring these guys back, but you mm-hmm. know. They're in Minneapolis. They're in. Uh, they're going to Pennsylvania. They go back to you know. They go to Pittsburgh. They go to Philly. They go to Boston. Can a Hulk Hogan sell extra tickets? Yeah, goddamn yeah. Oh, they for will. sure. And uh, Steve Austin. Uh, Steve Austin. Uh, uh, listen, Dwayne Undertaker. Dwayne. Yeah, Dwayne. Dwayne. Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade. Yeah. Dwayne Wayne. Dwayne Wayne. Or the, it's a different world. <laughs> Mr. Wayne. Yeah, Mr. Wayne. Uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Dwayne, listen, Dwayne I would, the Walk I would, Johnson. <laughs> Dwayne the Walk. Uh, I would, I would say, you know, expect to see these guys mm-hmm. in some capacity. Uh, so we'll leave that there. Uh, AW, Mark Henry, man, go ahead. Mark Henry, I had such a good segue before. Sorry, uh, man, it's okay. <laughs> Mark Henry side with uh AEW man over the weekend right like i popped i popped and uh he's gonna be the rampage commentator which is kind of cool he is by the way bob Rowe with five bucks brutal bob Rowe. bayside zone for, <laughs> for andrew's uber to his parole officer vi- parole visit very yeah. nice well i am dressed for my visit with my parole officer so um what do you think about the mark henry signing um i think it's it's smart yeah absolutely uh i i i think you know it's interesting people are like wow they're grabbing all these old timers for what i'm like think about the wwe backstage right think mm-hmm. about who's on commentary right who's uh who w- runs you know who are the agents who runs backstage it's all these guys man mm-hmm. uh you need old and it's always been like that like i think people forget you know who the agents were the it was guy it was older talent Wahoo McDaniel, Arn Anderson, and, it's great, you know, Arn Anderson was John Cena's agent forever. Yeah, so you need guys like this. And I'm not listen. I don't want to see Mark Henry on TV every week. I don't like yeah. wrestling. I don't want to see Big Show wrestling every week. Even Christian, I think mm. Christian. Listen, I think Christian is is there's a purpose for him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'm okay with the Christian stuff, but you know he's 47, 48 mm. years old. You don't want him to be your top guy. Uh, which he's right. not going to be the top guy, but he's a supporting cast, which is fine. But guys like Mark Henry, they have a lot to give, a lot of education to give to these oh, younger yeah. talents. Um, him and I mean, he, they're going to teach these younger guys. The, it's a seminar mm. with the greatest names in the business. Absolutely. So Absolutely. how do you not capitalize on that? How do you say, well, you know what? Mark Henry's available, but eh, I don't want him. He's a WWE guy. Yeah. No, you're going to get this guy, and he's going to coach these kids. It's a win for all the talent on that roster. It's a win for all the African American talent on that roster. Like Mark Henry is so passionate, well, dude. It's going to teach kids how to get over. It, but he's a passionate guy about the business, and he's got so much left in the tank. And guess what? He he was already friends with Tony Khan. So again, yeah. if he went to Vince and said, "Hey, I feel like I can contribute in this way." And then Vince turns around and goes, we don't need you in that capacity. It's up to him to go, hey, well, I'm going to contribute in this way over here. Yeah. You know, it's not. And I think that's the misconception that people have about these guys signing is that comparative to like, let's say when Hogan and Bischoff went to TNA to collect a paycheck. These guys, I. The narrative. That was the narrative. narrative. I feel like these guys aren't there to collect a paycheck. They're there to build and contribute because they love. They love the business. The rest Listen, of Mark Henry, and, and I know, I got to tell you, I, I know certain people that are very good mm-hmm. friends with Mark Henry, and they say this man is a total class act, and he's mm-hmm. like totally humble, and a, like one of the nicest guys you will meet. Absolutely. And what a great mind for the business, because he was a guy that ate so much shit. He came in oh, yeah. hot, the world's strongest man, mm-hmm. and they... It was like re- a $10 million deal or something? It, it was a million dollar deal, okay, but over like X amount of time, right? It wasn't. It wasn't like I don't. Was it a million a year? I don't know. But it was a big. big it was a big contract for yeah, somebody yeah. who had not wrestled a match. It was a big deal, and he he learned how to work, and he did well, and you know he was given the shaft a little bit, and they mm-hmm. made they made him go you know and train again and OVW and lose weight and yeah. gain this and gain that. And the guy had a Hall of Fame career. Mm-hmm. To, to, I mean, listen, to, to every extent, he won the world title. Yeah, dude. The House of Pain stuff was so phenomenal. Good. So good. Do you like the House of Pain stuff or the John Cena retirement turn? I think the John Cena retirement turn um, was so unexpected. Uh-huh. 
that it really showed what a unbelievable talent this guy Absolutely. is. I still get chills thinking you know, about I, that. Me too. That yeah. fucking salmon suit, man, <sighs> etched in my mind. <laughs> but it was so believable. Mm -hmm. And it and you got into mm -hmm. it. You go, you know what? I want to see him beat the shit out of John Cena Absolutely. Now. And he was a bad guy. Yeah, it was great. great. House of Pain. Did I say Hall of Pain or House of Pain? You said House of Pain. I, listen, I'm all about mm -hmm. House of Pain. Jump around. Mm -hmm. I love wild Irish guys from Brooklyn. It's <laughs> all I want. Uh, Hall of Pain. All right. Sorry. It's okay. Go ahead. Uh, so apparently we also got uh, Dynamite's going to be preempted throughout the month of June um, for the NBA, I believe. And uh, it's likely to stay on Friday nights. Now, apparently they expected the numbers to dip. They did. Not this much. Really? No. Not not five hundred thousand. Uh, last week's dynamite rating five hundred twenty six thousand views on Friday night for a show that starts at ten o'clock. Is that? See, I don't know anything about ratings. Is that Tell me. good? The ten o'clock and Friday Fridays are a death spot for television. Right. Friday nights are really really bad. Um, Especially now, historically, people are kind of going out again. People are starting to go out. Historically, Friday you don't want to be on a Friday. Mm -hmm. um, WWE did not want a Friday. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you that. And and that Friday really screwed up their tour. It, actually, it, the expenses to travel went up mm -hmm. because oh, wow. of the Friday move. So, I I would say that they should go up a little bit more from this now that mm -hmm. more people understand. Like, I think five twenty six is unnecessarily low. Like, I don't think that's a fair indicator right. of where they're going to fall on a Friday night. I I think they'll be in the sixes to sevens. Okay. I think it's going to pick up momentum. And by the end of the month, by the end of June, you're probably going to see like a better number. Yeah. Because I also think this past week, myself included, forgot that Dynamite wasn't on Wednesday. Hmm. Right? Yeah. I think we all did collectively in the group I think chat. All, yeah, yeah, we yeah. were like, we can't wait for Dynamite. Oh, no. Oh, it's no. on Friday. Yeah. Oh, I got to stay up. I go to bed very early. Yeah. Uh, uh, so this is going to be the Rampage spot. By the way, uh, Mark Henry is the announcer on Rampage. So fine. Uh, do we have so time fine. for... So I like, fine. I like that bumper. So fine. I want you to just do that. So fine. It's so fine. <laughs> uh, do we want to run down this card or do we want to go into questions? We got 18 minutes before okay. we get out of here. Okay. Let's quickly run down the card go, and then fire. quickly do questions. Yeah. All right. Uh, guys, we did a nice watch along five hours for AEW Double or Nothing on Sunday. It was a lot of fun. Um, thank you guys for tuning in who tuned in and thank you guys for donating who donated. Uh, Opening match, Serena Deeb uh, beat Rio in 14 minutes. Solid match, really Great enjoyed it. match, really, really liked this match. Serena Deeb, is, she's, she's awesome, man. Yeah, no, this was a really good match by both of them. They, and, and Rio is, has gotten so much better. Uh, yeah, Hangman Page beat Brian Cage 12 minutes, 3 seconds. Talk about the pop. Talk about the pop for <sighs> Hangman. So over this guy. You know what? That crowd loved him. Mm -hmm. And you know what you got to do with him? Take it nice and easy. Absolutely. Don't do it yet. Yeah. Do, follow the Austin method. When Austin got over late 96, mm -hmm. 97, they, they, were, they were like, okay, he's getting over, but not yet, not yet, not yet. They built it, built it, built it. They got to do this with Hangman. Yeah. They got to do it. And you know what? If, if Kenny Omega continues on with the belt collector stuff, he could beat Kenny. Yes, absolutely. And I would love to see that. Now I'm invested. You know what? A year ago, I would told you it was a mistake mm -hmm. to put the title on him. Now... Give them a little bit more time. Well, especially, and I'll try to say this as quick as possible because we're, str we're strapped for time, but if the story is that Kenny is losing every belt at some point and the last belt he has is that the most precious AEW title, yeah. that's where Hangman takes it. Very cool. Love it. Uh, AEW World Tag Team Championship match, the Young Bucks versus uh, John Moxie, Eddie Kingston, 21 minutes. This is my favorite match. Me too. Uh, love that they come out with Wild Thing. Mox, I think Mox got a little bit of a louder pop than Hangman. I, I you know what? I got to re-listen to it. Mm -hmm. I got to re-listen. It wasn't as prompt. I, you may be right. But I didn't. I got to listen to it. And if you watch it back, I still feel like it looked like he was about to throw that little kid into the, the audience. Kid. Yeah, he was going to throw that kid <laughs> in the audience. Uh, I got to tell you, this was probably my favorite match too. However, yes. a little too many, too much going on. You think so? Yeah. Nice. For a clean win, there yeah. were too many interferences. But they did a great job of... This is this is an interesting build for Mox and Kingston because they did a phenomenal not that he needed it, but they did such a great job of making this guy look like an unbeatable beast. Yeah. That it took so much to put this guy down and three or four um BTE triggers to do it, right? Yeah. 
Um, Jungle Boy won the Casino Battle Royal after 23 minutes. It came down to him and Christian. Uh, the crowd singing his song. Fantastic. I really enjoyed it. I was so wrong about this dude not winning. I thought it was going to be Penta. Oh, the uh, the Battle Royal? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was a good pick. But it was cool that it came down to him and Christian. And I feel like a lot of wrestling fans were on the edge of their seat going, oh, I'm, it's, it'll be cool if it's Christian, but I hope it's not Christian. You know? And it yeah. was nice that he kind of gave him the quote-unquote rub um, when he won. Uh, we also had the American Dream, Cody Rhodes for one night only, with Arn Anderson beating Anthony Agogo with QT Marshall. 11-minute match. Um, this match, I feel like it was placed perfectly on the card. Okay. Right? Yeah. Not my favorite match. It uh, was fine. I, I feel like there was just, I, I, again, this is me personally as a fan. Not that the moves weren't executed well. I feel like there was like one or two, like weird missteps that took me out of it. I, I, I don't think the match played out that great. Okay. Yeah. RJ in the chat, 699, Canadian, love the show, guys, been listening for years. Can you provide an update on your other podcast, What the Tech? Has it been canceled? It has not been canceled. Mm. Uh, we're just on a hiatus until I get these uh, clubs open. And then I could go back to... Turkish clubs. Turkish clubs, like this. <laughs> Persian clubs. Persian yeah. clubs. Uh, we, got, we had the AW uh, TNT Championship, the TNT Championship match, Miro beating Lance Archer in 10 minutes. Nice hard-hitting match. And I really thought Archer was going to take it at some point. I like this match a lot. This match, I, I genuinely enjoyed. Mm. Two big hosses going at it. Big boy match. Yeah, big boy match. Uh, we had the AW World Championship match. Dr. Britt Baker beating Hikaru Shida in 18 minutes. What a match. Um, I thought there were some issues with it, but I thought overall it was a fine match. Apparently in the scrum after the match, Britt hugged Izzy, super fan Izzy. I saw that. And said, now you've hugged a real role model. Freaking brilliant. So good. Brilliant. Britt Baker is really coming to her own. Yeah. Uh, love it. She's fantastic. She's going to be such a stalwart in that division. Can't wait to see where it, where it happens. Yeah. Were you just doing this? I'm just fixing my cups. <laughs> Darby Allen oh. and Sting to beat Scorpio Sky Ethan Page. 15 minute match. What a match. I really liked it. Mm-hmm. Sting doing the crossbody off the uh, the poker yeah. chips. I thought that match Fantastic. was done perfectly. Perfectly booked. Uh, AEW World Championship match. Kenny Omega beat Orange Cassidy. 26 minutes. I started checking out a little bit. I think the show went a little long at this point. You looked at the clock and you rolled your eyes. You melted down. And yeah. then when that happens, I, I, I know you. Listen, I know, yeah. I know, your, I know your, your facial expressions. You rolled your eyes and your face dropped. And by the way, you, you called this match. You said it's going to be a freaking weirdo roll-up finish. I said it's this is gonna be the closest Orange Cassidy comes, blah 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 blah. I guess the finish right. That's cool. Big Barry Horowitz for me. Uh Stadium Stampede, the inner circle beat the pinnacle 31 minutes and 31 seconds. This was all about Sammy getting over, huh? Really was. Really and the other match was about Sammy getting over too. Yep. Because he started. I like this match. I loved Seeing Tully and oh, FTR yeah. in those ridiculous cutoffs and so Tully's good. just standing like this. So good, dude. So good. So freaking good. Conan Shadow. I gotta tell you, this I like this stadium stampede thousand times better than the previous one. This was a lot of fun, man. It, was this better in your opinion? It was different, but I think I enjoyed this a little bit more because it was a little more hard hitting, you know. And I'm listen, I'm a fan of the blood. I like it. Um this this was a great build for Sammy. Sammy and Sean Spears ended the match. Uh, Urban Meyer appeared, which got a lot of mainstream press because they were fighting in Daly's place, like in all the different yeah, offices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it did get a lot of crossover. But it was really well done. It was really cool, guys. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. Um, do you want to go into questions or do you want to go into the card for Dynamite? Go go quickly into Dynamite and then we'll do questions. Okay. We have uh, about 12 minutes left, guys. So it looks like Dynamite on Friday, you're going to get uh, Dustin Rhodes versus Nick Camarado in a bull rope match. I'm looking for, I like that. Yeah. I like that idea. Uh, Young Bucks versus Pac versus Penta. That's going to be awesome. Cody and Lee Johnson versus QT Marshall and Anthony Gogo. I feel like this is going to be the makeup for the Cody match on Double or Nothing. All right. Uh, Britt Baker, Championship Celebration. That's going to be a lot of fun. By the way, no Moxley, no Kenny. No Moxley, no Kenny. And I think no Bucks. No, Bucks are on. Bucks are on. Somebody uh, else wasn't on. I forgot what it was. In a couple of weeks, you're going to get Kenny versus Jungle Boy. Yes. Um... We can skip the New Japan. Yeah, we'll pass the New Japan. The stuff, only the only one thing I wanted to talk about is uh, June seventh Dominion. Oh, it's going to be Okada and Takagi for the vacant uh, IWGP Championship. So Okada has to take it. 
Ooh, all right. You think another Okada run is, or I think it's gonna. You know what? That's gonna be too close to call. Because I was saying Takagi Shingo is the champion. I feel like Takagi. They're setting him up with the Osprey feud big time. Yeah, but Osprey's out for a while. Yeah. So you know what? I I wouldn't mind Okada champion. Um. All let's right. see. All right, we got Q and A guys. Q and A time. We got to get out of here in ten minutes. If yes. AEW introduces a trios title, who would you book as the first champs? Oh, um, uh, I mean, you have so many options. You could do somebody. I, you mm. know what I would do? Penta Phoenix and uh, Pack. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like that's such a tremendous trio. By the way, ten dollars from our boy Shin. Shin, the gr- the only Shin in my life. The ten best, bucks. The best Shin. The best type of Shin. All right. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I'd go with that. I'd go with like Penta Phoenix, the Death Triangle. It's in their name. Yeah. Uh, Josh Frierks. Uh, question for Matt Men. Say a movie called Spaceland was created where one pro wrestler was selected to save the world from an alien invasion. Which wrestler does Earth choose? Michael Cole. Not a wrestler, but it would be <laughs> Michael Cole. Michael Cole would have to save the Earth. You got to go big and popular, right? All right, who are you going? Roman. You gotta go Roman. You gotta go big and popular. No, right? I don't want. I it, I don't want to pick the mm. obvious. Kenny Omega. I don't want to pick the obvious. Tanahashi. Tanahashi, but he would cause. He, he's like a weirdo alien. Okay. <laughs> so like they'd be like, oh, everybody's like us. All right, cool. Mm. Tanahashi's not real. He was manufactured with John Cena and Randy Orton. Who's the biggest wrestler in the world right now? Currently, Roman. Okay. Uh, Crown Wolf. Why aren't the writers being axed? How many times can we watch the same matches now? And SmackDown only has Bianca, Bailey, Sasha, Tamina, Natty, Liv, Carmella, and Sasha again. So Two they, Sashas? They go, <laughs> uh, they go through writers all the time. It's yeah. just not public. Um, all Elite Podcast. Thanks for answering my question. Appreciate it, boys. Yeah. All Elite Podcast. Go check them out. Um, I, I, I think they do axe writers. It's just all over the place. Yeah. Uh, you, know, you don't know. You, you don't know when they are because you've never heard of these people. I think we got time for a couple more. Couple more. All right. Uh, the is there really talks with New Japan and WWE? Um, Some large twenty-three. Large twenty-three. I have a theory on this, but I'm afraid to say my theory because then it, it's going to get picked up. But I think you could assume where where I stand on this because mm-hmm. I haven't said a word about the story. Okay. Right. No. Good. I, I just I just feel like been a good boy. I'm gonna uh, I'm. I don't know anything that would make me say no, mm-hmm. but I've I've heard. Ha, do they have conversations? Yes, it happens, not all mm-hmm. the time, but it's a common occurrence. Whether or not the conversation was, let's do a talent exchange, and mm-hmm. we highlight New Japan talent, and you use Amer- you know WWE or NXT talent. I do I do not think the conversations were what we think it was. Okay, you know what I mean? Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, John Gorman asks, with the recent raw rating, do you think there'll ever be a possibility where they get below a million viewers? We're getting closer and closer. Can you say that? Can you say that question? With the recent raw rating, yeah. do you think that there is a possibility where they get below a million viewers? For a for raw. A quarter hour, yes. Okay. Hundred percent it's gonna happen. Um for an hour. By the way, that one point one million, I I, I Mm. I've heard that that could be a mistake. Okay. Because it's so low. Like 1.1 million for the third hour Mm -hmm. is ridiculously low. Now, it was Memorial Day. But normally, the way that Memorial Day works is that the first hour is terrible, and then it grows a little bit. Okay. Which that did happen. The second hour was better than the first hour, but there was a tremendous drop for the third. Listen, maybe they didn't offer what people want. I I think if they go below a million, that would be very, very bad for them. It oh, will yeah. not be that. That's like an oh shit moment. Huge oh shit moment, right? Because one point one million, you're you're not. That's not good. That's your average. That's not even your high or your low. I mean, that's your mm-hmm. average. So interesting. Uh, Rated C asks: Since Jungle Boy is facing Kenny uh, in two weeks for the world title, do you think Christian Cage will face Kenny at All Out? I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say no. Also, I'm gonna say since All Out is like their their WrestleMania. Has to be has to be a like a real Nick Aldis. I I don't know who it's gonna be. I would mm. love it to be Nick Aldis, but I don't think so. Um I Jonathan is writing notes in the notes. He's writing notes in the oh, notes. Oh, he missed the questions because he, he was busy. He's writing his diary right He's now. He's writing his diary. Dear diary. Um 
I, it has to be somebody that you're like, okay, you know what? They could dethrone Kenny right now. It needs to be believable. I don't think anybody believed that Kenny was losing the title at this paper. Right, right. It that, just, it wasn't a thing. He has to lose all those belts first before he loses exactly. the NWA. Yeah. And, or gain more belts and then to lose them all. I think it's going to be Nick Aldis. Dude. I think he's taking that, that NWA championship. Oh, Kenny's taking yeah. it. Yeah. That would be cool. That would be amazing. Uh, Bob Hazel said, Bob Hazelwood says, I have no questions, but I like it when Rich or Andrew say my name. Hi, Bob Hazelwood. Bob Hazelwood. Bob Hazelwood. Bob Hazelwood. Oh, he's going to show up now. It was like Beetlejuice. All right. We got five minutes. Uh, question from Brendan Santoro. If Adam Cole is going to stay in NXT, do you have any idea how well he's being paid? Very well. That's what I mean. It would be very well. And his supplementary question. Is there a reason why he's the only person in WWE to stream on Twitch now? He probably went and said, I want to fucking stream on Twitch and go F yourself if you tell me I can't. He probably said he probably set it up ahead of time. I don't know. You know, some of these guys, it, it's it's less about, I mean, sometimes mm -hmm. it's less about like the overall rule, but it's more about who you are. And mm -hmm. some guys are able to do something. You know, maybe they negotiated before. Maybe when they were, you know, it's part of their deal that they could do these things. I don't know. We got two more questions. Yeah. And then we're going to go. Uh, any news on Daniel Bryan? I have no news on Daniel Bryan. I wish I did. Interesting. Uh, Chocolate Thunder asks, this, this, is, this is the final question. Okay. This is going to pop me, and I love playing fantasy yep. booking. Could Okada versus Roman happen at SummerSlam if the rumors are true between New Japan and WWE? Listen, I, I'm going to tell you, if, if I were to take a, a intelligent guess, I would say the odds of that happening at SummerSlam are none. Okay. <laughs> okay. But how cool would that be? I feel like a lot of stuff but is like, oh, how cool would, would that be? I would I like to see an Okada versus Roman Reigns match? Yeah, F yeah, I would love to see <laughs> that. Who wouldn't? I mean, I, listen, it's such a bonkers combination of talent that you're like, mm. you know what? I, I'm intrigued. And you know it's going to be a good match. So why not? I mean, listen, personally, I'd love to see it. Are we going to see it? I don't I don't believe so. You know what the you know what the first four minutes of that match is? Yeah, them hitting the ropes, ropes and show and bouncing off each other's and shoulders. And the sparks just come off, just hitting, yeah. and then Roman hits him with the the this thing, the Superman punch. Okada no sells it, fighting spirit. Okay, giant giant rainmaker. I just got an email from WWE just now. Hey, you guys talking about? No, me? it's for the Thunderdome. <laughs> They're inviting me to the Thunderdome. I think it's that's a generic it. spam. It's nothing. Funny. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey. Um, any news on Brian Danielson? No, nothing Nothing right now. Nothing on Brian Danielson. Or Daniel Bryan. Or Daniel Bryan. Or the American Dragon. Nothing. On, oh, tons on the American Dragon. Mm -hmm. Tons on the American Dream. Uh-oh. That's my new name, by the way. You're going to be the American Dream. The Andrew Armenian Dragon? Dream, Andrew Zarian. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, that's it for this week. Listen, uh, we had some news. There's some more stuff coming through the... Uh, the channels over the last next couple days so i'm sure we're going to be filled with a bunch of stuff on the social media pages follow me on twitter at andrew zarin you can follow rich btc rich on twitter i gotta go catch a train sorry to uh start this early and cut it short but i gotta go to um my big boy job yeah baby i just make diapers that's my job that's your big I, boy. I, wear, I wear a suit and i just make diapers i assemble diapers that's my thing it's actually a building called the big boy diaper company <laughs> Bob Hazelwood, five bucks, Beetlejuiced me. Bob Hazelwood, Bob Hazelwood, Bob Hazelwood. And he just pops up. He just appears. And he starts talking about, you know, Mid-South Wrestling and Jim Cornette and the Midnight, the Midnight Riders and all those guys. All right. That's it for this week, guys. Love you all. See you next time. Later.